If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show today. We're talking about herbs, what herbs that are good to grow, and why you should grow herbs. As well as the $2.5 million garden, courtesy the information from amigardener.com. And we have podcaster, blogger, stay-at-home mom, Jill McSheehy, and she'll be on the show as well. As well as your garden questions and our garden answers. Garden Talk Radio starts right now. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether on those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, <clears throat> or anywhere in between, I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me, my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable. We're live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by the way. And the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is the website that contains over nearly 1,200 garden videos, short and long format, all to help you grow more of what you enjoy eating. There's a number of ways in which you can contact us on the program. You can certainly send us an email anytime at twvgshow at gmail.com. Hit us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is twvgshow or hashtag twvg. You can always call in on the Ivy Organics 3 one Plant Guard hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. And that number is 414-444-5250. Uh, and you can do that any time during the show. Well, we're going to get into the uh, real, real briefly, Holly, one of our sponsors, Woodman's uh, Food Market. Uh, you you ex- uh, exercised one of their uh, new features uh, this past week, and it worked very well. So if you just want to talk on that, we like to talk about our sponsors and the great things that they do. Sure. So what you can do is you can uh, order groceries and then go pick them up. And it was it was nice. Um, the, only, the only gripe I have, I would say, is that if it, they don't have an item, then you basically don't get it. It does give you an option for substitution, but then do you want to substitute your whole grocery list? Like everything. And, yeah. everything? Um, but other than that, I would say that it was a good overall experience. Um, it was convenient. Drove I, up, they put it in the car, you drove away. Right. Um, I put it, you know, I put what I needed. You choose your pickup time, and um, it was it was nice. So I definitely would recommend trying it out see if you like it and there was no additional charge versus what you would call there, the, there was a charge oh there was a yeah, charge there's a the, charge okay um it's very very nominal compared it's, to what it would take for you to go in the store if you had children or just didn't have the time to do it right yeah exactly it, it pays and, for itself yeah okay well let's 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 talk about something that pays for itself and that's growing herbs herbs are a very expensive item to purchase uh at the grocery store in those little very small ounce size plastic right. containers. Yeah, when you see people dry, buying those herbs, I kind of wonder, like, do they... You, you want to slap it out of their hands and say, hey, what are you thinking? Is that what you <laughs> or, want to do? Or I just maybe want to, like, you know, they could adopt me if they have all this extra money to spend on those expensive oh. herbs. Well, we're um, going to go over five veg, uh, five herbs in which you can be growing in your on your patio porch or can uh, in, in a container on, on those items. You can buy, you can start these from seed. Or you can run over to Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. I was there, I guess it was last uh, Saturday, last uh, Wednesday, I guess it was. I don't know. I was there sometime this week. And um, they have a variety. They're still available. They have uh, tables full of herbs, rosemary, uh, sage, you na- basil, you name it. They've got it. So here are five in which we would recommend that you should grow. And then you can dry these if you have too much of it. Uh, dehydrate it and then you know use it uh, that way. You can also make pesto out of some of these. But one n- n- number one thing that people say, well, what herbs would you recommend growing in a container? Mint. Mint is very very invasive. Yeah, I even if you don't want to grow herbs in a container, you want to grow them in your garden. I would say I would keep the mint in a container, a small like little um, raised mini raised bed if you want a lot of mint for some reason right. but yeah i would definitely keep that i could keep the mint in a container uh sherwin from the forum on weekdays he he is he was telling me as a child he decided to put some mint in his mother's uh garden and his mother wasn't too happy and it overtook the garden and yeah, they, he doesn't garden anymore no that's, that's not the reason why he doesn't but he learned very early in life that mint is a very invasive uh where did he get this mint from? I, I, I forget. He, when I was on the show, March, promoting this program, right. he was telling me the story. 
Uh, so mint, uh, can, uh, you know, keep it in a container. And there's a, there's a bunch of different kinds of mint. It's not just a one fit all. There's several different types of mint. They're all invasive. So you want to be very uh, aware of that. Secondary, I think the most popular herb is basil. Yeah, basil is definitely very popular, and um, it's not just green basil. No, so there's a lot of different types of basil. Surprisingly, so there's lemon basil, lime basil, cinnamon basil, licorice basil, purple. So there's like a purple basil, an Italian large leaf basil. So that's just some of like fifteen. Just, yeah. Plus so varieties. If, and the lemon basil is kind of fun. Like it's. It tastes lemony, mm-hmm. but it tastes basil at the same time. And the licorice basil, it tastes like licorice. What right. the name is is exactly the, f- the flavor in which it, it portrays. Yeah, so if you don't like licorice, don't grow licorice basil. But if you like lemony... Or cinnamon basil. Yeah, cinnamon, cinnamon basil. basil. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, so that that's kind of fun. Yeah, so you can have several different containers with several different varieties. Uh, and you can start these. We keep uh, herbs growing in our windowsill all year long. So it's not something that, okay, I can only grow it until October. You could actually grow it inside, get a good uh, mm-hmm. potting mix from Purple Cow, grow it in, in a windowsill, works works well. Uh, another one is pretty much parsley. That's kind of a popular one. For yeah, parsley is popular. People like it in stews and soups and uh, on many dishes. Uh, it can be a garnish. So parsley is definitely uh, with po- you know pasta. People eat it with pasta. So parsley is a, a definitely another popular one that... You could grow, um, I think, rosemary. Oh, yes. Especially if you're a cook. And rosemary is really good with chicken and, and potatoes. Mm. Um, I think it's not always necessarily thought about, but it does have, um, it's got more, I don't want to say woody, but it has like this. Um, it's a flavor in which ties the dish together. Yeah, it ties the dish together. I don't think you would just like sprinkle rosemary on a salad, but it's good um, when you when you blend it with, or when you combine it with certain things. And the easiest way, rosemary can take up to twenty five to thirty days to germinate. So the best thing is to go to Blue Mills, pay three dollars and ninety nine cents for a nice start, and grow it there. And you can it will grow for years. Uh, you do have to. There's some issues maybe that we faced when taking it in the in the winter and bring it out in the spring. But some of these, uh, it, it can be a perennial that can last years. It comes in. It, it will, some of these gardeners, you look in line, it's this giant shrub and it's rosemary because it's been there for years. It becomes like almost like a tree shrub. So rosemary is a very good one. We like that quite a bit. Oregano is something that we haven't played around with too much, uh, but that is very easily uh, able to grow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just kind of like growing, growing basil or um, any of these herbs, really. It's pretty easy. Um, so thyme, <laughs> do, you have, do you have some time for thyme? Uh-huh. Um, thyme is just like any of these other herbs, too. It's just easy to grow, and it just you can combine well, and, it with other. And when, when you say roast or baked chicken, you think thyme yeah. uh, seasoning on it. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice uh, additional feature to your dish. Uh, one that people may not be familiar with that can be grown in some uh, in a container, and we're talking a, a larger container, lemongrass. Yeah, lemongrass is fun to grow. It's it's pretty. It smells good. It's used in a lot of Asian dishes. Um, so and and we can we make teas out of it. Yeah, we make teas out of it. You dried lemongrass, and it's kind of um, there's this hu- huge lemongrass bouquet on our kitchen table that Joey uh, provided for me. So um, it's it's kind of fun. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, lemon balm here. Yeah, lemon balm is another uh, similar, I don't want to say similar plant to lemongrass, but you can... The, you, the flavor is yeah, the it's same. Yeah, lem- it's lemony, yeah. Um, and you can make teas with that as well. We haven't grown lemon balm in a couple of years. No, we made lem- yeah, lemon balm tea is what we made. You make lemongrass tea. And this can be cold or hot yeah. on these teas. It doesn't have to be one uh, temperature. You can if, be you, a- if you buy lemon tea... Mm-hmm. If you look at the the ingredients, um, it a lot of times has lemongrass in it, so that's not an uncommon thing. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what other herbs could could people grow that we haven't listed here that that you may recommend? So I would say cilantro. Um, now, uh, cilantro can be difficult to grow. It can be difficult to get started. It can be difficult um, to keep it from going to, to seed. keep it from going to seed. But if you really like cilantro, I would definitely recommend trying to grow it. Maybe you can have some success with it, experiment with it, just take a container and set that aside for growing cilantro and see what happens when it's 
you know, 79 cents a stock at the store. Sometimes you're like... Or is it a stock or a sprig or whatever? Like a bunch. A a bundle. Yeah, Yeah. a bundle. Sometimes you're like, do I really need to grow this? Yeah. So that's not one of the expensive herbs. That would be one that I would say, if you're going to grow any of them, don't worry about cilantro. Uh, You can play around with it, but commit to... If if you just need some for salsa or whatever, spend the the 79 cents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... Any, uh, and, that, and these are the ones that we grow, uh, predominantly we grow in our gardens, in our containers, uh, so that, that you know, uh, we, we bought starts this year. We didn't start the seeds. We chose to do starts this year. Lavender is another one that can oh, yeah, be lavender. Uh, difficult. We were able to get three lavender plants started. I've got to transplant, uh, transplant those or move those into hanging baskets in the kitchen window. I was very pleased with those. Those can be one of the more difficult plants in order to germinate uh, in uh, your own start system. So uh, that's just some of the many herbs in which we would recommend growing in a container. Now, uh, when a container is, you're using a container, make sure you have one that has a good amount of potting soil, good amount of material, because you have the little cute dinksy, the uh, little cute uh, four or five ounce cups. Uh, they're going to dry out very, very quickly. And also, you want to make sure you have drainage holes. Drainage holes That's are very important. important too. Yeah, the more mass of the soil. And you don't have to grow these outside. We grow a lot of herbs in our window, so yeah, yeah inside. More mass soil, the, the, the slower it will dry out. And you do have to feed these with a all balanced fertilizer. Uh, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3 1 Plant Guard Hotline. Caller, you are on the air. Oh, okay. Listen, um, I um, picked up some sweet potatoes from a. Uh, uh, from the fruit ranch, and um, I've taken, well, I've, I've got quite a few, but I've taken three of them and put them in a, a container and put just a little water at the bottom of the pan, and I have the prettiest flower now. I mean, it, it has grown real tall. My question is, now I don't, I, I'm not sure whether I'm just going to keep it as a plant, uh, as a flower. Uh, for instance, if I want a plant to get sweet potatoes, would I cut 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 like a part of the potato and and put it in uh, the ground, or would I just put the whole potato that has grown the plant? Because it's beautiful. I didn't know it was going to happen that way. I think it must have taken about. A couple of weeks or more, and I have a beautiful plant now. So there's two things in which you can do. One, you can plant that whole potato in the ground, and if conditions are uh, correct, you will get sweet potatoes. Secondly, what you could do is take that growth and twist it off at the junction in which it came out of the potato, set it in a glass of water so it will root naturally. It takes about a week to do. And then you can take that rooted stalk or that growth and then put that in the ground and then leave your potato in the water for it to regrow more plants. Really? Uh, now, the, the only thing you need to be aware of is a sweet potato will take about 90 to 120 days to uh, develop tubers under the ground if conditions are, are correct. So you've got pretty much a one-shot deal with the current potato that you've got growing uh, before it gets uh, cold in, in fall. So you can, okay. you can do one or, those, one or the other. Either or will work. That's what my father used to do. I'm from the south, and he, we used to have a whole patch of sweet, beautiful red-looking sweet potatoes. And ever since then, I, I've always wondered, how do you do that? So I just, I, I am just so uh, amazed at how this beautiful flower has developed. But I thank you very much, and I will do that before the weather gets cold again. I'm going to keep it for keep it for a while for a flower and then I'm, I'm going to put it in the in my yard and see what happens. Absolutely. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, when we come back, it's about the $2.5 million garden and was it really necessary? We'll give you all the details right after this. Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Wouldn't you love to get more from your growing space by utilizing the square foot garden method and properly spacing your plants? 
Seeding Square will optimize and organize your veggie garden to grow more greens and less weeds. The square foot color-coded seed spacer is a great tool for any garden, ground, container, or raised bed, and all experience levels, even little green thumbs. For more information, visit SeedingSquare.com. Seeding Square is gardening made simple. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccessOrganics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. PlantSuccessOrganics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccessOrganics.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products. Unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at rebelgreen.com. Cool as a cucumber. This Garden Fun Fact is sponsored by Minerti.com. Get your three-pack today. Drop the tea bag in water, let steep, then feed your soil, not your plants. 100% organic. Find out more at Minerti.com. Always free shipping. The term cool as a cucumber is actually derived from the cucumber's ability to cool the temperature of the blood. Also, when applied topically, the cucumber really does cool the blood and eases facial swelling, which is why cucumbers are so popular in facial regimens. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Do you enjoy hanging baskets but struggle to keep them properly watered? The Plant Booster self-watering system is a mechanical system that will ensure optimal soil moisture at all times by reacting to the weight of each plant. The weight of each plant tells the system how much water it needs. Unlike a timer-controlled system where all plants get water at the same time, whether they need it or not. Also ideal for condos or apartments with no outdoor water source. Check out details, videos, and extensive explanation and ideas for application at plantbooster.net. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Handy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, Blue Mills Landscaping Garden Center, Purple Cow Organics. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey Kelly Baird. Well, whenever you have a lot of money, I guess you can do big things and it's not really that big of a deal if it doesn't work out or people get upset. For people like Holly and myself, when we have some money, we're very wise with how we 
utilize it, whether it's for personal or life expenses. Uh, we're going to Som- talk sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's sometimes you ha- you want to spend a little bit on yourself because you know you're treat yourself. Uh, you treat yourself. Yeah. You're you're X amount of years old. You've earned the the right to spend a little money on yourself. Well, uh, the two point five million dollar garden here, Holly. What what is it, and t- what what's going on here? Okay, so the $2.5 million garden is the White House garden. Now, first of all, this is not a political. On either side, this is about the garden. I yeah. want to make that clear. Right, so it's the White House. The White House garden. Yeah, so it doesn't matter uh, what affiliation, what affiliation, you're affiliation associated. You, are, you are, but it's just the White House garden. The White House is there. It's a, it's a building. Um, so the White House garden is, it was brought back by Michelle Obama after several decades, and what had happened is that Burpee Seed Company gave $2.5 million donation to upkeep the garden to 2036. And they gave that donation in the first term of um, President of, Obama's. President Obama. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so that was but, 2008. Mm-hmm. So how many years is that? I don't know. Okay. 2008 so, to 2036, this is what this grant will cover. The, so it's 28 years. Yeah, the, okay. the maintenance of this garden. Right. So it was for the be- public to benefit from. And it was supposed to be inspirational and mimic a backyard garden. So in this this um, garden space was 1,100 square feet. And then in 2011, they added 1,700 square feet. So it was 2,800 square feet. Or it is 2,800 square feet. It's still, it's still there. That's about 1,000 square feet more than in the back, your mom's backyard garden that we run that you'll see predominantly on our videos. Right. But, it, yeah, so it's something that if you have a large backyard and you wanted to um, use it, as a garden, you could probably mimic the layout. However, um, they only use it basically to feed the White House staff. Okay. So that's what they use it for. It doesn't pr- produce nearly as much food as a backyard gardener does. Um, they actually produce usually about one and a half times less than an average backyard. Of that mag- of that size. Yeah, of that yeah. size. Um, instead, So then they got kind of... Um, Greedy? Greedy or fancy, and we don't know who did this. Like we don't know if it was what, what contract, what, what yeah, contract like, uh, agency went through and did this. No, I mean saying that like we don't know who made these decisions. Okay, okay. I somehow doubt that Michelle Obama was making all these decisions. She probably delegated somebody to do it, mm-hmm. and was like, "This is, you know, this is our budget. This is what we want to do. Make it happen." Right. And then that person took the dis- the, the the understanding. Okay, here's what I want to do with this. Right. Yeah. Um, now we don't know that, but that would, kind of that's would, the chain of assume, command usually yeah. in in government, right? right. Or her her staff well, staff, yeah. yeah. Um, so they took they decided to put green cement or green concrete down because they did raised beds. So they put green concrete down between the raised beds, which they really could have just done like wood chips, but maybe they didn't research. I don't know. Um, and then. What? Would have been cheaper, yeah. And, would have been, and been more of uh, represent, uh, re- representing a backyard garden, right? That's what that's what I'm getting at. Is yeah. that like maybe you have access to green cement? I don't know, but most people don't. So using wood chips is more applicable to the average person. Um, and then they use steel to build the vet beds versus cedar, and cedar is a naturally I don't want to say anti rot, rot well, anti rot, rot extremely free. slow rot. Let's put that let's extremely use that slow term. rot uh, wood, and so that would have been cheaper as well. So that was kind of two things they have going. Um, I guess that they decided to use for that two point five million dollar. Um, I guess the thing is, is that you know they're trying to have the public benefit from it. It's supposed to be inspirational. Personally, like if I were to, if maybe I wasn't a gardener, right, and I was mm-hmm. like. Oh, the White House has a garden. That's cool. And then you go to the website, you look at it, and you're like, "This looks expensive." Like, but, um, a little over uh, almost eighty nine thousand three hundred dollars a year over that twenty eight year span. Yeah. That's a lot of money for a twenty eight hundred square foot garden. Yeah, that's, uh, per that's, year. That's uh, just when a, it comes down to it. Um, so it, it there was there's ways you know if if I was given two I would I would take a fraction of that and still have plenty to play around with you know with, with that kind of money you could do acreages of a garden mm-hmm. and not just square feet yeah, of a garden yeah and our our friend Luke from MI Gardener this he is, did a this is where this came from yeah. Luke did a video on this and that's and where we were and he kind of talked about his cost how he you know <laughs> if he did the same thing he would definitely have like 
tens of thousands of dollars left. And I completely agree. If we, if you and I designed this garden for the White House, it would look really nice. Right. But it would look like something that people could actually do versus maybe like a little bit, I don't know, fancy. <laughs> yeah. So what, what would be some ways that we can cost, instead of, you know, the fanciness of the, the garden here, you said the wood chips instead of the green sand, the metal raised beds instead of the uh, uh, cedar. You can even do pine. Pine will last five, seven years. You get the treaty kind. It doesn't have the copper fungicide in it. Uh, or the, it has a copper fungicide in it. It doesn't have the arsenic in which we used to have treated wood 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, so they've, so yeah, you can do it so. that way too. Yeah. A- and a typical four foot by 18 foot, uh, 14 by four foot wide by, let's say, 20 foot long bed, about $28 in lumber. Uh, is yeah. what it ca- takes to, to put it together. So very inexpensive way to... Um, and you may have to replace the soil after a few years or replenish the soil, what have you. But um, Joey's doing some math here. Yeah. But you definitely can do it on a much cheaper budget. You can use reclaimed things, reused items. Um, so it's not like, obviously, you don't have to spend anywhere near 2.5 million and maybe part of that was keeping it you know keep the upkeep they have paying the staff to paying the yeah. staff to upkeep it things like that but it sounds like it's not overly productive and maybe that's something that is um that they should um kind of think about but they're not going to but it's yeah already, the, the, so, it's already done yeah so it's but it's it's a, if you're able to go on the website it, um it's a phenomenal garden and it's supposed to encourage people that they can create a garden in their backyard. And we encourage people to create a garden of any size or uh, a stature in their backyard. So I want you to be aware that that's, you know, and whether you're whatever political party you're affiliated with, we all see that what costs us as us small amounts, it seems like the government, it, it costs them a whole lot more to do what we did with for a very little I'm out. Definitely. Uh, that's what. Uh, so when we come back, Jill, I'm going to. Machihi. Machihi will be with us. She was a new time gardener, knew nothing about gardening in 2013, and now she's creating blogs and podcasts to help new gardeners not make the mistakes that she did right after this. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Are you short on time when it comes to grocery shopping? Yes, I'm talking to you. Shopwoodmans.com offers online shopping for store pickup or delivery on their over 60,000 plus items at Woodman's Everyday Low Prices. Or online, select a pickup or delivery time and create more time to do what you want. Leave the work to Woodman's. Also, check out the Shopwoodman's.com app. You can even make specialist requests like specific sizes of produce. For more information, visit shopwoodmans.com. It's that time to get your lawn lush and green with the Chapin Spreader, the broadcast spreader that outperforms all in their class. Get consistent results year after year as if you had hired your own professional lawn service. Find Chapin Spreaders online or order through your local Home Depot, Lowe's, True Value, or Do It Best hardware stores. To see the full line of Chapin lawn and garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. This season, arm yourself with the better spreader, Chapin. The Tree Diaper is an advanced plant hydration system. It is an innovative device that captures and holds the water around your plants, once full, and hydrates them slowly when the plants need it over a period of 30 days. From half to 30 gallon capacity based on your needs. And easy to install even for a first time gardener. The Tree Diaper reduces weeds, protects plants, enhances root growth, and prevents overwatering. Whether you're growing trees, vegetables, flowers, house plants, in containers, or the ground, your plants will benefit greatly by allowing the Tree Diaper to do the work for you. Find out more at TreeDiaper.com. Made in the USA. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Purple Cow Organics quickly and naturally increases the uptake of nutrients and water to your plants with their new bioactive vegetable supercharger designed to meet the unique needs by helping the living organisms in the soil help plants uptake the nutrients more quickly through their roots and leaves. Find out more at purplecoworganics.com. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at thegardenershollowleg.com. Save 10% off 
percent by using the word veggies at checkout. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed container or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through drippingspringsoyas.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented, high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Place an order for your business. Call toll-free, 866-294-3424. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food, a fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system, solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable, organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG125 to save $125 and get free shipping. A $250 value on the purchase of an Eco Garden original garden unit available only in stone color. Purchases must be made to the website EcoGardenSystems.com forward slash store. Offer valid through December 31st, 2018. Available to the contiguous United States. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oil, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Well, I was at Blue Nell's Landscape and Garden Center, I believe it was last Saturday, Holly. I picked up some more kohlrabi starts to finish out the row, and I picked up, uh, I think it was some basil and a couple of tomatoes and an eggplant. And they still have plenty of peppers, eggplants, berry bushes, strawberry, all that stuff. Uh, anything you need for your garden, Blue Mills Landscape and uh, Garden Center has it, and they just don't do this a couple of months a year. This is what they do for their yeah, it's uh, not their like business. Your, your like big box right. garden center area that might sell Christmas trees in winter. Um, so yeah, they're over at forty nine thirty West Loomis Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton. You can go to bluemills dot com or call four one four. Two eight two forty two twenty. Uh go there. They have plenty of uh plant starts and uh, advice for free. The the advice is for free. The plant starts you you gotta purchase. Right. Well uh, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics three one plant guard hotline and bring on our next guest. Yeah, Jill McSheehy is a stay at home mom with a blog, podcast, and online gardening course that she has developed to help to help herself um, and to help beginner gardeners find their way. Welcome, Welcome to the program, Jill. Hi, Joey and Holly. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for coming on the program, taking time out of your busy day to enlighten us and to share some of your garden wisdom with all of us and our listeners. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. So you began this journey in 2013, uh, so just, you know, uh, five less years, than five years yeah. ago or five years ago. What inspired your journey and your very first garden? Well, I started gardening because that year I became a stay-at-home mom after working in management at a Ford dealership for a decade. And going down to a one-income family, that was really, with the grocery bill, was really the only thing that I could control at the time. And so I decided to cut the grocery budget, I would try to grow my own food as much as possible. So I really started it from a very practical standpoint and just grew to love it. Now... Going into this, how much knowledge did you actually have about gardening uh, at, or any at all? Well, that's kind of a funny story because when I was growing up, my mom had a garden, but I have very few memories of it because I just didn't care. And she she kind of joked with me that one day when I was a teenager, she asked me to go pick a pepper, and I asked her, what's a pepper? 
so that kind of gives you an idea that I had I had no experience whatsoever in gardening when I started. So whenever you, so with no real knowledge of, of produce identification here, what was your experience once you got started? Did you think going into this this would be successful, or was you kind of in the back of your mind going, I'm going to take a shot at this, I don't expect anything to work very well or at all? Well, I actually had pretty high hopes, and I think it's because I'm a pretty good student. Like, I've always enjoyed research and learning, and I pretty much spent that whole fall and winter studying how to grow a vegetable garden because I'm kind of a research nerd like that. So I really did expect to have a successful garden just because I know how to follow directions. Um, there were some unknowns that when it comes to pests and diseases and things like that, I didn't know what I would have to come up against in my own garden. But overall, I, I think I was pretty ambitious and I had pretty high expectations. Now, and you looked at, you did your research and figured out or at least tried to understand what may happen. Now, you're in Arkansas, correct? Yes. So based on the people, based on your region of where you're living, uh, you're going to ha- experience different insects that are bad than we here in Wisconsin or you in Arkansas. So that one article doesn't answer all the questions of what bad bugs am I going to experience in my vegetable garden. Exactly. And it was very overwhelming because when you're studying about all these things and reading the books and they say, well, you could have, you know, these 101 different pests and I didn't know which ones I would have. I didn't know anyone who was actively gardening, so I, I didn't really have anybody even to ask to have any idea what to expect. So I think I just tried to do my best and then thought, you know, this first season I'll figure out what I'm up against when it comes to pests and diseases. Definitely. Um, What what are some of uh, the first resources that you said you looked online, did some research? Where was like, where did you go first to to help new gardeners who are beginning? What's some locations? Well, I... Actually, you're going to laugh at this. My favorite two resources was Vegetable Gardening for Dummies and the Everything Grow Your Own Vegetable book. So those were just the very basic, just because I didn't know where else to start. Of course, now I see that there is a plethora of resources available now to new gardeners, way more than, than I ever found then. So there's lots more available today, but those were the two that I really got started with. And then another one my mom got me for Christmas that year was put out by, I believe it was the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture. They had their own handbook called Vegetable Gardening in Arkansas. And that really helped me to understand more how specific plants will grow well in my area, timing of planting, you know, things like that. That that was very helpful from a locally specific standpoint. Definitely. Now, what is one or two mistakes you made that now you look back and they seem like maybe you should have known better, like, hey, Captain Obvious, I probably shouldn't have done that. Well, that's kind of a hard question because when you're just beginning and you don't have any knowledge to begin with, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, looking back, I really tried to do my best in what the mistakes that I did make. I don't know that I, I would have known better. I think the biggest mistake I had the first season was we had actually planned the garden plot in the fall and I covered it with newspaper and wood chips to be able to do kind of a, you know, a back to Eden sort of gardening method. And everything was ready in the spring, and then we got all the spring rains, and it was underwater. And I didn't realize in the summer and the fall that that, that was a low place in my yard. And so probably in mid-April or so, which is right around when we try to plant things here in Arkansas, my husband and I just went and that bought it. My, my dad bought me a tiller, and we we completely changed the garden location. So that was one thing we had to do the very first season, just to be able to plant somewhere that wasn't constantly saturated with water. Now, whenever you did your research, obviously, when we tell people that want to start a new garden, grow what you want to eat, but you have to grow what can be grown in your area. Was there any surprises that you found that, hey, I can grow this and we do like eating this particular item? I think for me, this may seem simple, but um, green beans was one thing that I wanted to grow. And, I, you know, everybody in my area, it seems like, that did garden, they really in, they could grow green beans. But that was one thing I never even saw my mom growing. But one thing also was potatoes and I don't know why I decided to grow potatoes. I'd never seen anybody grow them in my area. Of course, they do. I know now. 
but that was one thing that worked out really well for me in my area. Um, it's so many things actually that I was able to try worked out well. It's the cooler season crops that we really struggle with, and that's one thing that I've learned on the opposite end that some things are a lot harder to grow and some things are pretty impossible to grow here in our area. So when you decided to put this garden in, what was the layout? Did you decide, hey, I'm going to go big or go home or I need to start small? Or what was the mindset with the the decision that was made on that? I went really big. I think my first one ended up being about 2,000 square foot. And that was the total of my in-ground beds and my raised beds. And the reason for that was because I wanted to grow food for our family. I wanted to grow enough tomatoes to can our own tomato sauce, green beans to have enough green beans to last all year. I really wanted to grow with abundant production so that we really could make a dent in the grocery bill. I didn't, it wasn't just a hobby for me, but I do recommend for beginners that to, to start small because that was, it was definitely a huge learning curve that first year with having so much space. Well, you were able to stay at home, too, and kind of make this your job. So if you, people have a full-time job, that kind of really limits the uh, amount of time that they can dedicate to a very large garden that they may not know how to manage. Absolutely. I, there, I don't think there's any way I could have done anything of that scale when I was working a full-time job. I think it worked out really well for me, though, because coming off of working full-time for over 10 years, right after college, I already had this, like, go, go, go type mindset. And so because I was so used to working so much, then I came home, I was able to pour that into the garden. And so that was pretty a pretty easy shift for me. But for people who are just trying to get into gardening for the first time and they're trying to add it into their busy schedule, I definitely recommend starting small and then expanding as you're able to. Definitely. Now, um, you did cho- choose your own ra- raised beds. You do some in-ground gardening, but you have a, a few raised beds. Why did you choose to go with those raised beds? Well, I think a, a big part of it was that I wasn't quite sure how our ground soil was going to be. I did a soil test that fall, and it had a very low pH, like a 4.8. I knew I needed to amend it just from the, the research that I had done. But I also knew just from some other, just by going in the garden, that our soil was very high in clay content. So I started the raised beds that I did because I figured that I could control the fertility and the tilt of the soil better. And and I was right. And the in-ground bed has definitely been a work in progress, and it's doing better every year of amending the soil and all that. But it's definitely been a longer process, whereas the raised beds I was pretty much able to produce well right away right that 4.8 would have been great for blueberries but for garden for actual veg- vegetables you really need about a 6 8 to 7 2 and if you don't have that there's ways of bringing that ph up but if you don't have a good ph you're not going to have a you got to have a good foundation in order to have a good structure and you didn't have that and you were aware of that very early on yes and speaking of blueberries my blueberry bushes are amazing as you can imagine <laughs> with that acidic soil but yes, I had I went ahead and limed it, and I do things every year. And I did a soil test last spring, and it was right around six point five. So um, it's it's really at an ideal range now. So Jill, how can we find out more about you? How can our listeners find your podcast that you take really go in depth and, and step by step and help people uh, not make the mistakes that you made uh, your journey, your first journey into this gardening world. Yes, you can reach me on my website at journeywithbill.net or the Beginner's Garden Podcast, which you can get on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting app, either one. Uh, Very knowledgeable, very easy to understand. You you make it into a language that any level gardener can understand and not feel intimidated by the, the instructions that you provide. I definitely try to do that because that was one thing, you know, five years ago, I really struggled with finding that beginning gardener advice. Of course, I think that it's a lot more available now that I'm, that I'm in it more, but I definitely want someone who has zero knowledge like I did to be able to come in and say, I can do this and just kind of walk them step by step of just the basic things that, excuse me, some people just don't don't talk about if you've been experienced, the experienced gardener, you don't realize how how basic things need to be when you're first starting. That, that is absolutely correct. Well, Jill, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join Holly and myself and sharing all of this wisdom with uh, us and our listeners. Thank you, Jill. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on. Absolutely. And when we come back, your garden questions, our garden answers, right after this. 
If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh juice, carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Caterina Bellum, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 278 and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B O B B. Hostels wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and a complete line of all natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed free with their time tested, American made wheel hoes that are built to last a lifetime. And the precision garden seeders have proven designed for planting a wide variety of seeds. Haas Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at HaasTools.com. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at ZazProducts.com. Tall Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique Silver Age wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunks. Find out more at TallEarth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code W-I-S-C-O-N-V-E-G to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. I know you're looking for an alternative to harsh chemicals, but you want professional strength props. BioSafe's Garden Line gives you just that. Professionally used for 20 years, available to homeowners. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products from plant food, fertilizer, to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. BioSafe's products can be used around children, pets, wildlife, so you can enjoy your yard more. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Find us on Facebook at BioSafe home and garden and visit us at biosafe.net to learn more get 10 percent off your next purchase at biosafe.net by using coupon code twvg at checkout the number one key to healthy productive plants are the roots starting from seed to full-grown plants rootmaker.com has the answer from seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots creating a fabulous root system Never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Flame Engineering, Eco Garden Systems, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, The Gardener's Hollow Legs, 
Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. We talk gardening. That's all we do. That's what this is all about. With your host, Joey and Holly Baird. A number of ways in which you can contact us. You can certainly do that on the IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard Hotline. IV Organic 3 in 1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields, prune, and damaged surfaces. For use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, this product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. And you can do that, or you can uh, email us at twvgshow at gmail.com, uh, at twvgshow on Twitter. A number of questions come in uh, via Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and a like. One was, uh, you talked about growing milkweed in your garden. Did you in- initially or intentionally uh, plant it there? So, no, that milkweed was there. It naturally, naturally came up. Right. Yep. It was just... Now, you can purchase... You can purchase milkweed plants or seeds. Seeds. Uh, Sometimes they just give them away. Right. Make sure it is a, uh, uh, relates to the environment uh, or the, the location that you're at because there's different milkweed varieties for different areas of the country. So if you're going to do that, uh, get the right one for your area. Uh, is fertilizer still good? I found a bag in the garage, unopened. Uh, it's been several years. Can I still use it? You can. Um, it obviously depends on what it is, but if you get if, if, if it's, it's a, if it's granular, yeah. If you get if it's granular, it's and fine. it's not clumped together, not humidity and moisture hasn't gotten to it. If it's dry and flaky and perfectly fine, now if it is clumpy, you can break it up and use it. But the mineral content does not change. No. There's not a chemical thing that happens uh, in that. Uh, in your recent video, growing a garden in a bucket, can I get? Do I need a food grade bucket, or can I just use a regular clean five gallon bucket from the local hardware store? You can use a clean five gallon bucket from the local hardware store. I know that they have deals sometimes, and yeah, as long as it's just it's not been used for like if it's just one of the ones, the brand new ones, you can de- definitely use those. Uh, what varieties of potatoes do you grow, and how much can you expect on getting off of one plant? Well, we grow Yukon Golds, and I think we grow a purple variety this year. That uh, based on you know the big good gardeners, and I don't, I mean the really ones you see on YouTube, they can get five to sometimes ten pounds on return of one pound of potatoes. Uh, we average between three, two to three, sometimes four pounds of potatoes per. Uh, Pound, and that's how you gauge it: pounds in versus pounds out. So that's what we look at, and we can. I think the best thing to do is that even you know we do have we grow different varieties, but definitely do your research, see what kind of variety you might want to grow and what you're using, and build the fertility of the soil. Robert asks, "Can you test for juglong uh, if you are using it in a potting mix?" I was able to find there is no test. That is for Julong, but I found many times you can find that the soil under a walnut tree is quite alkaline, which adversely affects plant growth. Now, Julong is the toxicity in which black walnut trees emit in their root system to prohibit other vegetation or many forms of vegetation to grow or, uh, from growing around that tree, kind of as an insurance policy to, to make the tree stronger so it's not having many uh, competitiveness uh, plants or other trees to grow next to it. Uh, the toxicity affects uh, mature black walnut trees and can extend 50 to 80 feet from the trunk of the tree with great toxicity occurring within the a drip line, which is several feet away from the actual trunk of the tree. In this area, plants, uh, the, the, the julong may wilt or die, uh, may cause the plants to wilt or die. Um, some plants tolerate it uh, and will grow normally. Vegetables such as tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, uh, uh, potatoes and ornamentals such as lilacs and uh, rhododendrons are particularly sensitive to the julong that, that that toxicity that's in the chem in the in the soil that the tree releases. Again, if you have small black walnut trees and you don't want them in your area, you want to remove them before this occurs. Uh, what uh, does the effect of the black walnut tree look like or the toxicity? Well, plants that are sensitive to that juglong, J-U-G-L, 
O-N-E, may be stunted in their growth. They may have yellow or brown twisted leaves, uh, wilting, and some plants, uh, part of the plants may die over time. Often the um, tissue of the plant uh, can uh, have some water uptake issues uh, and, and affect the discoloration. Symptoms may also... Um, may not occur, may, may occur rapidly even within a few days after the plants have been planted there based on the sensitivity of the species that you're transplanting in that tree, that root zone area. Now, alternatives, some plants may survive for years near uh, a young walnut tree but will wilt and die when the tree becomes to a, a more larger, mature state. The black walnut is uh, toxic, can be confused with uh, wilt causing bacteria and uh, fungal pathogens. So keep that in mind. If you're in an area where there is no trees, uh, that doesn't mean that that toxicity is gone. It can last for some time. There's no cure for the plants affected by the toxin. Uh, removing the walnut tree may not particular uh, may not be uh, practical in some applications, as the tree could be a focal point of your landscape. In addition, even walnut trees that have been removed, the Jew Long, will not immediately el be eliminated from the soil because it's next to impossible to remove all the roots of that tree from the soil and uh, the remaining uh, pieces may continue to extract the toxicity for several years as they decay. So you want to keep that in mind. Just because you've got a walnut tree that you removed, uh, in an area because it was dying or you just didn't want it or you're trying to put a garden in, that toxicity is still uh, active in them roots. So many people will choose to go to a straw bell garden type of method or a raised bed situation. Uh, different uh, in institutions say that you can till the area in which that tree was at to try to expose some of that soil to the atmosphere. If you raise the pH level, uh, that can help. Some people say lower it. It's really something you have to do your research on to figure out what's best for it. Uh, again, it, it can, it's not going to be a, okay, remove the tree uh, last weekend. We're going to do X, Y, and Z this weekend, and we can plant right away. That's not the, the scenario there. Uh, we've talked about the black walnut leaves last week in the question and answer portion of the program. Uh, this is just another issue with the black walnuts. They produce great uh, nuts for consumption, but they do emit that toxicity, that juglong uh, that's in the soil. So uh, 50 to 80 feet from the trunk of the tree on these mature trees. So if you have an immature tree, you want to go ahead and remove that as soon as possible if you don't want it in your area. Well, we are out of time, and we uh, certainly appreciate you taking time to join us on the program and telling your friends about us that uh, we're the only uh, place in town you can get Garden Talk Radio in Milwaukee. Uh, programming note, join us next week where we will be talking about five problems you're facing in your vegetable garden and how to solve them, as well as three strategies to organic pest control in the in your garden, in your landscape, as well as Lisa Davis. She is an MPH. She's host and producer of Talk Health Today. It's your health on NPR. She's an author of Clean Eating and Dirty Sex. A health expert uh, will be with us talking about our health and what we need to do to uh, make things a little bit better. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit in its entirety, you can certainly find that under the radio tab at the website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Dot com. Want a specific interview or individual uh, segment? Find that underneath the highlight tab on the main page on the same website. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.